Let's take a look at lesson 12, practice problem 1. We are told the demand equation is that Q equals 4000 minus 4P, and the supply equation is Q equals P minus 200. If we want to graph these, however, we'll have to solve for P. So for demand, I just move this over to the other side, so we have 4P, and then I subtract Q from both sides, and then uh, we're going to have to divide by 4, so we're going to get something like P equals 4,000 minus Q all over 4, and I could say that that equals 1,000 minus 1 fourth Q. I could do the same thing for supply, and basically I just add 200 to both sides, so P equals Q plus 200. All right, now we can graph this. There's a few ways you can go about solving these problems. So I like to look at a graph. So I'm just going to label my axes and I'm going to draw my supply curve and my demand curve. So my supply curve is going to have a uh, p-intercept of 200. So I'll just mark this point as 200 and a slope of 1. So that's the supply curve. And the demand curve is going to have a p-intercept of 1,000. Sorry, this might not be to scale. And it's going to have a slope of minus 1 fourth. So I know that it's going to be a little bit less steep. And once again, pardon my illustration. So here's our demand curve and we know that it's going to cross the quantity axis here at a quantity of 4,000. And our goal is to find the equilibrium point. So how do we do that? I think the easiest way is to go ahead and set the original supply and demand equations equal to each other. So for part A, we get 4,000 minus 4P equal to P minus 200, okay, so that's for part A, and we can then solve for the equilibrium price, and I could just add 4P to both sides, add 200 to both sides, and I get 4200 equals 5P, divide both sides by 5, now P equals 840. So my equilibrium price here is 840. And I know that my quantity is P minus 200. So my quantity is 840 minus 200, which is 640. For part B, we want to know what is the price elasticity of demand at the equilibrium point. So let's use the point slope formula. And we get 1 over the slope. Well, we can see here the slope is minus 1 fourth. So 1 over minus 1 fourth. And you know what? I'm just going to rewrite that as negative 4 and we want to multiply that by P over Q. Well, we know that P is 840, and Q is 640. So when you multiply that out, you get negative 5.25. Let's go ahead in part C and do the same thing for supply. The slope of the supply equation is just 1. So we get 1 over 1, which is just 1, times P over Q. 840 over 640, and then that's going to equal 1.3125. Part D wants us to find what proportion of the tax will be paid by consumers. Well, in order to do that, we have a $10 tax. What we're going to have to do is write a demand equation with a tax. So demand with a tax is going to be that P equals 1,000, we have to take away the $10 tax, so that's 990 minus 1 fourth Q. So go ahead and draw that. Remember it's a parallel shift. We have this new intercept of 990, and we want to find out what is this quantity right here that will be transacted after the tax. In order to do that, we could set this new demand equal to the same supply, and for part D, we get, D is a multi-step process, so we want to set 990 minus 1 fourth Q 
equal to q plus 200. So add 1 fourth q to both sides, we get 5 fourths q. Subtract 200 from both sides, we get 790. So just multiply both sides by 4 fifths. And we get that q is equal to 632. So the quantity is 632. And now that we know the quantity, we want to find what is this height of the supply curve at that quantity, and at a quantity of 632, what is the height of the demand curve? Because the height of the demand curve is the price that buyers are going to pay. The height of the supply curve is the price that sellers are going to keep, and the difference between these two is going to be the amount of the tax, so that should be $10. So we could do this a few different ways. I think the easiest one is just to use this uh, height of the supply curve. We know Q plus 200, so 632 plus 200, that makes this 832. And if we know the amount of the tax is $10, we don't even have to go to this demand equation. We could just know that this is 842 up here. So you see that buyers are paying $2 of the tax and sellers are paying $8 of the tax. So buyers pay an extra $2 out of the 10, so they get a 20% share. And we know that shares have to add up to 100%, so 80% is paid by the sellers. Or you could say, okay, well, they're paying $8 of the 10, and that's 80%. That finishes up with a practice problem. I want to just take this opportunity while I have your attention to shade in a couple areas. Uh, there is this area on the graph, the extra amount buyers pay above the equilibrium price, and that's going to be the tax paid by the buyers. And then we have the area between the old equilibrium price and the amount that sellers get to keep after the tax, and that's the tax paid by the sellers. And we have some deadweight loss. There were 640 units for which the benefit of the unit was greater than the cost of producing that unit. However, we're not making these last eight guitars here. We're not trading those, so there is some deadweight loss that will come out of the tax. And consumers still get some consumer surplus, and the consumer surplus is the height between the demand curve and the price that buyers are going to pay. So I take that out to the quantity that's actually transacted, and that gives you the consumer surplus. And we can find the producer surplus is the difference between the price sellers were willing to produce at and the price that they actually get to keep. So this triangle is going to be the producer surplus. All right, good luck.